There was a herd of wild cattle abandoned after the trails in and out of the canyon were blocked. I ride no paint, I lead no dan, I'm going to Montana to throw the hula hand. We passed a few abandoned homesteads on the river, and we hiked out to one of them. It's now part of the Rock Creek Ranch, but it gave you an idea of how hard it was to make a go of it down in the canyon. In their backs are all raw, right around, little dog is right around, slow. I think uh, up until World War II, it was it worked out pretty well. Um, I don't know how they did during the Depression and all, but they. Uh, before the range got really depleted, they could get a lot of a lot of beef off the range, and also they had a lot of cowboys available who could work relatively inexpensively. It's hard work, and nowadays you can't find people to do it. You know, working cattle up and down all these canyons and um, across the river and stuff, you can't just hire someone who knows how to ride a horse. It's got to be someone who's uh, used to dealing with cows, horses, living outside, um, not getting paid a whole lot, <laughs> and all that. Old Bill Jones had a daughter and a son. One went to college and the other went wrong. All those ranches, you know, when you look, it's like, well, they were pretty self-sufficient. Chicken coop, garden, um, you know, orchards. So they, a lot of what they needed just uh, for their own sustenance, they could produce. And whether they made enough to put in the bank to do much with later is probably not the case. Oh, the fiery and the scruffy are raring to go. What's the best thing about Desolation right. Canyon? For me, the whiskey distillery of below Firewater Canyon. <laughs> I'm the day bartender at the Early Bird Saloon. Dad's a little into the whiskey. <laughs> Mormon little... boy. <laughs> That's why you bring two Mormons on the trip so that one Mormon doesn't drink all your beer. Then I draw one from the keg and You really had to be jonesing for a drink to go up uh, to this moonshiner's cabin. I'm the day bartender. It was built into the canyon wall, made from cut stones stacked on top of each other. There was a spring up there, so the moonshiner had a fresh water supply for his still. To the racetrack from the flop, this is where they make a stop to begin their bender. Chad and Jimmy practically wanted to move in. Who am I to critique? Chad's up there and distilling in the canyon, you know. I go up there, Chad, what are you doing? So Bad Chad! Bad Chad! We're circus freaks? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say more Bob sauce and he was like, oh my hell, people like this exist? <laughs> they can't really be that dumb. Put them on the river. <laughs> Or just a nodding head to comprehend their former splendor. Irregardless of your gender, the tips are always slander for the day. Bartender. We know they were made mostly by the culture that was living here about a thousand years ago. Um, there's a lot of hunting figures, what appear to be hunting figures, animals. There's also a lot of fantastic looking creatures that are just from somebody's imagination. And I've always wondered whether as part of their hunting or adulthood rituals or something, they were eating some detura weed or uh, or something else like that, and they'd have their visions and then peck them on the rocks. It 
in that crude thing on a rock, making that elk look alive. Yeah. You know, it looks alert, looks like it's going somewhere, looking around, and um, even though it's not all proportion and all, it uh, it's it's obvious kind of what what's going on. If there's any image I'm going to take away from this trip, it's the sight of the moon rising over the canyon walls. The moon was waxing the whole time during our trip. Our last night on the river was the night of the summer solstice, and it was also the first night of the full moon. So we had the shortest night of the year and the brightest moon of the trip. It's just a really powerful image, the cratered moon shining light into these 60 million years of history carved into the earth. <laughs> 